So the man in the orange vest is Alan Atkins. He's the supervisor here and he was extremely helpful in showing me everything about the little rock streetcar system. So, yeah. It's sort of. It's sort of meandering. So can you guys uh, say hi to the streetcar committee in Ottawa there? Hi, huh? Ottawa. Howdy, howdy. Thank you for inviting us down, by the way. Oh, you're just... welcome. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> can you introduce yourself? Alan Atkins, street supervisor. Okay. And? Ken Burning, I'm a driver. Good. A motorman, if you will. Oh, a motorman. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. Okay. Well, the, the Ottawa Heritage Streetcar Committee really appreciates you letting thank me look you at your thank system. Thank you all for coming. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so we're inside the uh, streetcar barn now, having a, a chat with the supervisor here. We have uh, two streetcars inside uh, maintenance. Three are out on the runs, on um, the blue and the green lines, which I've taken a look at already. Streetcar's got uh, two wheelchair lifts, one here at this end, and one down at the other end here. As I mentioned, there's four doors in the car, so depending on which direction the streetcar goes, it will open on the left or right side. So, and these are the seats that, that flip over depending on which direction they go. All right, so here you see the, the pit, maintenance pit for the streetcars. You can hear the mechanics in the background. They're doing some work back there. He was a thing called watch your step. No, there isn't. There are no steps. Right, that's why you have to watch your step, I guess. And that's the pit right there. You can see. Look at hoses. Yes, we have a brake here, which I'm not going to step on. Oh, there you got stairs at the end here, right over there. Yeah. And then we have the doors at the end. And hopefully, we stop before that. Mm -hmm. Over here, you got your parts department. And what else we got here? Oh, there's your people catcher down at the bottom. Make sure you don't uh, run over anybody that falls across the tracks. Uh, it's a safety mesh, so in the old days when the windows were open, they would uh, prevent people from sticking their heads out and getting hit by a passing streetcar on the next track. And the batteries here. There's your air compressor tanks. There's your wheels and your, and your braking system. So the mechanics, I believe, these um, trucks are from Milan, Italy. Streetcar itself is built by Gomeco up in Iowa, and I'll be there in a couple of days. And the guys here are very friendly. They said, take all the videos and pictures you want. No big deal. We don't care. <laughs> they have no copyright issue or anything like that. Oh, the fare box. They, um, so this is a standard fare box they use on their buses, so you can use like a, a pass, like I bought a, a Metro streetcar pass, it'll go in here, so when I go on streetcars, I can take unlimited rides for $2. And $2 is the all day fare, $1 is single fare. Lots of cameras on here too, all over the place, and that is to record various operation of the streetcar when it's in motion. You can see there on the left, there's one camera here, another camera here. And it's for security, so all the videos are recorded inside the car. So if, if it's needed for some sort of issue later on, like an, and it's even helpful regarding an accident. You see there's even uh, video cameras in the windows here. So. Uh, despite looking old, these actually are fairly mo these are modern controllers. Um, they uh, run much more easier than an old style streetcar, even though they look oh, like a vintage streetcar. On the outside, they actually are very modern operationally, much easier to drive than an old vintage streetcar. And they got GPS and they have radios. 
and dispatch as well when they operate the uh, streetcars across the bridge. So there's uh, no problem with uh, two streetcars going on the single track bridge. They, they control that fairly well. So. Let me get off, guys. You know, you know. Have a good night, Ken. Thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. All right. Howdy, howdy. Actually, I do have a pass. So I got it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Card not valid. Oh. Oh, well. Here we go. We'll catch you. How are you guys doing? Five, I need mean, three day passes. Okay, let me get logged in. Uh, for Blue Line. See the 
splash pad right through the trees. Yeah, got it. My kids say it's like the top park in Arkansas. Not surprised. So was this all once industrial, this area Top here? Bridge. Was, that was that all once an industrial area one time? That was all industrial area. This yeah. was actually, there were a lot of rail tracks that laid in here. And so yeah. You can still find them when they're doing work, like right in here. Yeah. They'll dig up the old rail line occasionally. Mm -hmm. Another bridge to Markham and Scott.
the person said Tough Nut was the de facto OG during that time. Again, yep. You want to walk down this side? Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Get out far enough where you can look and make sure you're in your foot. Yep. Looks like that. Yep. Take your control so no one will run off of your trolley while you're doing that. Okay, that's important. Yeah.
doors because sometimes they don't pull all the way open. Make sure they're beyond the uh, wheel. This is lower. They get on. When they give you the thumbs up, they got everything locked and all the brakes locked and everything. You head up. Too, I guess, right? Yeah. Stro like a stroller or something? Most strollers, they take the baby out and we drag them on the seat. Because oh, okay. they're light enough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so mm -hmm. they get off and then there's a stow button. They hit those and it takes it right back to where it was, it makes steps out of it again. Mm -hmm. I don't know who came up with this thing, but it's ingenious. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. And it looks really well made, too. You know, yeah, it's. it's uh, yeah. Can you show how that seat flips up there? Okay. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. So the seat. Yeah. And this is uh, where our straps are at. We're strapping down. Okay. Right. Most of the time, see, like on this side over here, it's all set up already. We leave one in place just to save time. Okay. Sure. Okay. Super. This is the uh, washroom for the uh, streetcar stuff. Halfway through the loop, sometimes you gotta go. <laughs> Something we have to put in our system too. So he's at a time stop here, halfway through the loop. I just mentioned that they, uh, they have a, a washroom here for the drivers, very important, because you gotta leave yourselves. You don't wanna be driving a streetcar if you feel uncomfortable. Uh, regarding the uh, switches, there are uh, most of the switches that allow the streetcar to go from one track to another are spring switches. There are two electrical switches, and I was asking the supervisor about that. 
And he said, in, of course, places like Ottawa, he said you may want to consider to have heated switches so they're, they're, they don't get frozen in the winter. So.
That being said, it's very good. Probably one of the best spring rolls I've ever had. That right in there. They also are watching her. Next stop is uh, Marriott Stop. We will be headed north across the river from here. Marriott, heading north. This is an electrical switch. What now? Is that an electric uh, switch here uh, on your tracks? This is an electric switch. Yes. Yeah. And uh, the green line goes straight through the river market, and we go. Yeah. yeah. It's the roughest switch to go around because people pull forward on the tracks. They don't understand how much we hang over when yes. we go around. Out front, they are Arkansas's oldest. 
And one time, they were offered me a uh, pilot with the Monster series by the History Channel. They turned it down saying no one would ever watch a show about a long shot. <laughs> Good decision. It's the truth. Yeah. Actually, what happened is they came in to set up to shoot the pilot, and they had all the cameras and all the cables and all the lights, and the guy said, I'm never going to be able to do business with all this stuff in here. Y'all got to go. And so their second choice was uh, was old Rick down in uh, Vegas. Yeah, gold and silver, right? <laughs> well, yeah. 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 That being said, it's the coolest pawn shop in the world. Uh, and you can outfit a hundred game cakes and stuff with these guys in there. It's really neat stuff. to allow that street car to go to the barn. Now he's putting the switch back in the normal position. There you go. Super. Oh, so here we are back inside the trolley barn and there's that street car that just came off of service. So it's Saturday evening now, it's 5.30 and I guess they only have two street cars in operation now. On the green and the blue because they no longer go to the Heifer Center, and now they're operating a much smaller route through downtown. So they don't need as many streetcars, so they're reducing their uh, capacity by one-third. Instead of three cars, now they're going to two cars in the evening. So. And of course you can see the out of service sign on there. Alright, so one thing I wanted to do here is 
show what brand new wheels look like. So these are brand new wheels with the streetcar. You see they're getting shipped in. Still got the straps on them. So these are steel wheels. It's important to note that because often in the old days uh, streetcar wheels were often made of iron. Very old ones. So the modern ones are steel. Last much longer. They're not as brittle. Um, they don't wear down as much either. So. And um, so Metro Streetcar here is part of uh, Rock Region Metro System. The employees can actually be in, are interchangeable between this division, the streetcar division here, and their bus division. So an employee who might come from the bus division may then be transferred here for a while and button or go back. Somebody from the streetcar system may actually go through the bus system. So. Although we said the funding here for the streetcar is somewhat separate than the funding for the buses. So it's a bit, bit of a different system. Okay. And that stairs down to the pit for maintenance. Okay. They, just, they just came in, they sent us the last two, that's it. Last two in the world. Oh. I hear that a lot. Oh, that's the last one. This is it. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the guy, like I said, there's there's mm -hmm. a the actual relay itself is like about as big as my fist. Mm -hmm. It just mounts up underneath the, in front of the truck and it just goes over that those big magnets on the bridge. Right. Yeah. But actually like I said, that's just for the bridge thing though. So mm -hmm. you don't have a Runaway trolley or anything yeah. going into the pizza place across the street. Mm, don't need that. <laughs> yeah, don't need that. Don't need no yeah. derails. Yeah. I've been fortunate not to have to put it. Right. Haven't had any derails since I started working mm -hmm. here. Thank God. Man, one last thing to mention before I leave Little Rock. The staff, uh, mechanics, and the drivers. And the supervisor, they're all telling me that um, even though the streetcar system itself here doesn't really make money because they only charge one dollar per ride and it's two dollars for an all day pass, they found that development around the streetcar track has boomed. They said there's all kinds of commercial real estate and residential real estate going up all along the streetcar track. It has been a real positive boom for the city. So while this streetcar system itself may actually be losing money, the net gain to the city in terms of commerce and in, in terms of tax revenue derived from all these new commercial and residential buildings that are going in, more than offsets any loss in the streetcar system. And that's something that always has to be part of this business plan. And that is something that's probably the most difficult thing is to try and forecast. What sort of positive real estate you know, outcomes will be created when you put in a heritage streetcar system or even a modern streetcar system or a hybrid of modern and heritage streetcars running together. So, so uh, the streetcar system in, in Little Rock is also, they have proposals for an increased loop going through a new part of downtown called Main Street and they uh, there's a, and there's another proposal to send a streetcar line to the airport the uh, they would like to, put, to have the streetcar go in close to the terminal or into the terminal or under the terminal but the airport authority doesn't want that because they, there's some sort of security concerns regarding that so, so that's sort of delayed any sort of implementation in the, in the short-term future for that. So. so the streetcar barn is actually in North Little Rock. You cross the Arkansas River. Where those t taller buildings are off in the distance, that is Little Rock proper on the uh, south side. See there's an, uh, the Verizon arenas over there. There's a lot of former railway tracks land in this city, like there is in many cities, and a lot of these former railway lands are being used for uh, modern urban renewal of various kinds, where you, whether it's shopping, commercial, residential, office, or whatever, so. or a parkland too. You know, when I was going across the bridge 
on the streetcar, the operator uh, was pointing out a lot of the new parkland, which used to be former railway lines, lands along the river. And one last uh, glimpse inside the streetcar barns. And again, the two streetcars on the right have modern electronic controllers supplied by Gomeco. Streetcar over here that just came out of service about an hour ago has the older Milan style of mechanical controller and it uh, works. So. The way is that uh, yellow Little Rock streetcar heads away. One of the reasons why it's in uh, yellow, they thought for, for greater visibility the streetcar should be yellow. So. They don't it's just, not everyone actually agrees it should be yellow, but they just think like a school bus, yellow stands out. And that's yeah, something to consider. The remainder of this video is uh, a series of still pictures. This is the inside of one of the uh, streetcars. You can see the modern controllers here at the uh, end here. That is the wheelchair lift which was shown earlier in the video. Beautiful workmanship inside the streetcars. Excellent carpentry that uh, Gomako does. Even a cup holder, boy, along with all that modern electronic uh, systems. There's a notice of uh, Title VI rights for people being allowed to enter onto public transit. By the way, the uh, system uh, takes credit cards as well, as cash. This is inside the streetcar office and they have a series of uh, historical pictures of former streetcars in Little Rock and North Little Rock. Just want to make a comment too about uh, regenerative braking. The two uh, streetcars that have the electronic controllers also have regenerative braking on their systems which allows them to uh, create electricity when they are slowing down the streetcar. This also saves a lot of wear and tear on the brake pads. The uh, three traditional style streetcars that use the Milan controllers have to use their brake pads more often to stop the uh, streetcar and, and consequently the three more traditional ones go through brake pads much more often than the streetcars that use regenerative braking. Again another view of the uh, streetcar barn. The streetcar barn is, is a pretty simple design it's large enough that it allows two tracks to be put inside. There's also an area for a parts department and an office space as well. And I mentioned uh, the pit here. Two of the more modern uh, controller streetcars are on the left. At this time of day, uh, three streetcars were out in service on the blue and the green lines. And that is the end of the uh, streetcar tour in Little Rock, Arkansas.